Woo! Despite my channel being a family-friendly channel with content suitable for all ages, this Let's Play series of Ghost Trick Phantom Detective has been rated T for Teen due to it featuring mild language and mild violence. So viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Welcome back to Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, everybody. Here we go. Chapter 17 out of 17. I feel like we've learned so much over the past 17 episodes, but I think the number one thing that I've now learned is don't eat like 20 Skittles right before you record because it will take you like five minutes to chew them all. Yes. So before we start, any predictions? Oh, any predictions? Um, I honestly don't know. I'm going to guess that Bad Sissel turned over a new leaf or it could be Mr. Olamp. The Ray of Ray. Light. He came to save our rescue. Otherwise, it could be like, Detective Chow, you had ghost tricks this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It could be that. I'm just trying to think of people that are think near Owen to you. Wilson, the medical examiner, is No! Save us. There's no way! He's out of the picture. All right, well, let's just find out what's happening, shall we? It's 5 10 a.m. in chapter that 17. That much happened in like an hour. That's crazy. Yeah, that makes sense. That was an intense episode. Okay. The upended submarine continues to sink, slowly but surely, a long, long journey to the bottom of the sea. Lynn and the little lady found the darkness and the salt water closing in on them, but at the very last second, something saved them. Now it looks down at them quietly. My head is filled with one giant question. What in the world is this thing? Robotic Sissel. Yeah. Okay. I see you managed to survive, Detective. Hey, hey you're... Excuse my appearance. I seem to have lost my body. Oh, and you there. You're the ghost who's been saving Lynn all evening, aren't you? Y you knew about me all along?! Of course. What else would explain all of those unnatural things happening? If you knew, how come you didn't do anything about it all this time? And how come you decide to save us all of a sudden? Thought you wanted to get revenge on us? I don't really know. Please! You gotta tell me! I need to know. Who in the world are you? Sissel, look at you! What happened? I can't hold on to that image of myself any longer. You can't remember who you are? That's right. I came all this way tonight trying to chase down my lost memory. For quite a bit of tonight, I thought I was you, Sissel. Sissel? My name isn't Sissel. I bet you'll remember really soon. Who you are, and who I am, too. What?! The man in front of me is not me. I'm even further away from the truth. Or maybe not. Something is stirring in my mind, a memory about to emerge. Do I know this man? Now that I've shed my image of myself, I feel like I'm one step closer to the truth. Are they out of the submarine, or are they just- No, this is still part of- this is just a different part that the water's not rising into. Oh, okay. They got us good. It's all over for this submarine. Its engine room is destroyed, there's a hole in the hull, and it's sinking as we speak. What are you doing here? I thought you had to deal with those people? They betrayed me. I was a fool to trust them. They ch already have what they wanted now. The Temzik fragment. I didn't know they had it all figured out. You mean, they figured out the source of your powers? Yeah. That meteorite's radiation has two effects on living creatures. It gives power and time. If you don't mind, we'd like to hear more. These ten years, I've been watching that junkyard superintendent do his research. And I think I've got kind of got some of it figured out. 
The meteorite's radiation gives spirits special powers. Like possessing and manipulating objects. And in my case, swapping objects! Exactly. Apparently there are individual differences in the powers we get. And it seems these powers change as time goes by. They do? Yeah. My powers have changed over the past ten years. At first I could only manipulate small living creatures. Now then, how do you suppose we got these powers? It's simple. It is? How is it then? In a nutshell, we died while exposed to the energy emitted by the meteorite. It's radiation. That's what does it? Dying while being exposed to the radiation? On that day ten years ago? A fragment of that meteorite pierced my heart, and I died. So of course I received special powers. Hey, wait a minute! Is that how I got my powers too? You know, you might be right. Also, that was like the saddest part of this entire game, by the way. Missile getting run over? Yeah. Aren't the Temzik remnants still the right there in the park at the bottom of the crater? You're right. So, that must mean... I must have died in the presence of the meteorite's radiation, too. Maybe it's cause we died when Lin was getting- taken control over? Which means that- I don't know, maybe not. Hmm. Another effect of the meteorite's radiation has on us is that it gives us time. Again, I think this time effect is centered around the theme of death, but it's not all that clear. So the fact that I can return to four minutes before a person's death <coughs> is another effect of that meteorite? One of the characteristics of that meteorite is its ability to replay the moment of death. Replay the moment of death? Ah, oh, This is all so strange and confusing, I can't take it all in! It makes about as much sense to me as anything else! Yeah, strange and confusing. That just about sums up the object that pierced my body that day. And thanks to that meteorite fragment, my very existence is a contradiction. What do you mean? That day... When the fragment pierced my heart, I lost my life. However, because it remained inside of me, that fragment continued to constantly regenerate my body. In other words, my body was continuously cycling between the moments that separated my life and death. What?! My body's vital functions stopped ten years ago, but my body's time is perpetually stopped at the moment just before death. Time just stopped, huh? So I simply existed, not really alive, and not really dead. That pretty much sums up these last ten years for me, ever since that incident in the park. My body hasn't aged a day, my hair hasn't grown an inch. Come to think of it, that old pigeon guy mentioned something. He said he couldn't cut the guy's body with the scalpel. So I guess, as soon as an incision was made, his body would be regenerated. Wow. So it's kind of like that clone idea that I had, but... Not... No. Not entirely. There are no clones, just one sure. guy. Before I left this country, I wanted to do one thing. I wanted to get revenge on the people who stole our lives. Our lives? As part of the deal, I made those guys promise to cooperate. Cooperate? You mean the kidnapping? It all went fine. I manipulated the justice minister and made him issue the execution order. But I thought he might call off the execution at the last second. So that's why he wanted his daughter kidnapped. But they kidnapped the wrong girl. Little did I know. They had their own reasons for cooperating with me. Huh? Their objective was to wipe out everybody who'd had to do with Temzik. Detective Jowd was one such person, so they were happy to cooperate. Inspector Cabanella and that junkyard super, they were slated to be wiped out too. And as it turns out, I was one of their targets as well. So they stole my Temzik fragment, and here I am. He still says, says his name's not Sissel, though. Right. But they had one more final target. 
You, detective. Me? Well, yeah, that makes sense. If you weren't there in the park that day ten years ago, I never would have thought of doing something as stupid as taking a hostage. Okay. But I was just a little kid playing in the park. Yeah, I know. Huh? Ten years later and you'd become a detective looking into Jowd's case. Tonight I invited you to a quiet spot on the edge of town. It was a trap, you see. I told you who I was. You never saw my face that day ten years ago. So of course you didn't recognize me. It's me! <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry! What you gonna do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, also foreshadowing, he leans up against barbed wire. Why? Is that a... Because he can't feel anything? Because if you go back to the first thing, when the... Uh, nearsighted Geo is cornering Lin. Uh -huh. She backs up into it and then she backs away because there's barbed wire there. But uh -huh. but Sissel was just Doesn't... leaning into it like it, he didn't even notice it. Oh. Foreshadowing. I took possession of you to make you shoot me. Your subconscious resisted me. Such incredible power. It was the first time I wasn't able to completely control somebody. The aim was off, and the first shot missed the mark. The junkyard was equipped with security cameras. I knew you'd be wanted for murder. That was my plan, anyway. Yeah, watch. Really subtle bit of foreshadowing. I guess. But they had other ideas. They simply wanted you wiped out. But then, something threw a big monkey wrench into their scheme. I showed up. Which doesn't make any sense why we showed up in the first place. Yeah, that's still a mystery. I was supposed to meet up with them after that, but then something went wrong. What happened? My body disappeared. Aha, the inspector in white was responsible for that one. My precious bargaining chip was in that body. I had to get it back no matter what. That inspector caused me no end of trouble. But why were those people targeting me? I never even heard of the Temzik meteorite. Because you were looking into the Joud case, they thought you would find out about Temzik sooner or later. Okay. And the game ends and everybody dies. <laughs> the end. And that's pretty much the whole story. The only thing left to do now is to wait for the water pressure to crush the submarine. Oh no! There are no cores that link from here to the water's surface. I have an idea! We hook up the phone line and- There are no communication cables down this deep. They meant for this submarine to be my coffin. A coffin for the dead. There's no escape. I think I kind of understand now. What you've been feeling these ten years. You what? This feeling! Cut off from the world all alone in a submarine! Sinking slowly toward the bottom of an endless sea. This must have been how you felt all along. Uh-oh. Great. Lynn? Camilla! Is it true? We're stuck here? What? Uh, uh... If my dad... If my dad was here, I bet he'd save us. Oh, Camilla, I'm so sorry! Hmm, that's funny. What is it, Sissel? 
There's something I don't understand. Why would they go to all the trouble of detaching the control room? What? Why didn't they just steal the Temzik fragment and escape if that's what they wanted? Why did they have to jettison your body off into the sea? Hmm, that's a good question. But I guess it doesn't matter why now. We'll never find it again. We have no idea where it was launched to. Wait a minute! Yes, we do! This will tell us where Detective Jowd is. That present from the Inspector in White! That's right, Detective Jowd hold me, told me to hold on to it for him. That was convenient. And the bullet is still in this person's body in the command room, right? Then we should be able to tell exactly where it is with this! But, but, even if we find out where it is, how do we get there? We should be able to figure something out between the three of us! With our powers! Right, Miss Lynn? Right. Oh, and wait a minute, what about a torpedo? A torpedo? In any case, it's way too early to give up. Hmm, it looks like Detective Jout is our last hope. Come on, let's get started! Trick time! After a long time, going through, let's talk to her. So my dad isn't here on the submarine? Don't worry, we're going to get him right now. Okay, I hope I didn't hurt Lynn's feelings. What I said about my dad saving us if he was here... Oh, don't worry about that! Comments like that are just roll right off of Miss Lynn's back! She's really thick-skinned! Ouch. I'm going to start being tougher, too. I want to make my dad proud of me. Miss Camilla. I'm sure your dad is very proud of you, Camilla. <laughs> Let's talk to her, too. So his shell is definitely there in the command room, right? Just without the fragment? It's there, yeah, but I don't know about calling it a shell. Detective Jowd's watch will tell us exactly where it is. Right. He said it was a radio receiver, didn't he? There still might not be another torpedo on this submarine. If we use it, we can get it to Detective Jowd. That's a brilliant plan, Detective. Yeah, you think so? Even though I said everything wrong? <laughs> so, what are you gonna do? Ride on top of the torpedo? Of course not! You guys are gonna go! Darn. I kinda wanted to see that. Did you want to see me drown? A grape, milady. <laughs> Why is this machine showing grapes at me? Well, this looks like the private cabin of the top officer, doesn't it? This machine is probably for feeding him grapes when he lies in bed. Oh, it sounds heavenly! I've been thinking about this for a while now, but don't you think that country's use of technology is just a little off? Says the guy who made a deal with said country. Anyway, it looks like the arm of this machine's a bit busted. The telephone! Torpedo room, engine room. Well, the engine room is completely gone. Yeah, it's a torpedo room. The torpedo room, huh? There might be another torpedo left there. I'll go check it out. Oh, I get it! You're gonna use a missile to ram the control room! Well, I don't know about Ram, and I don't know about Moom, but uh, well, yeah. we, we don't want to show a de we don't want to blow Detective Jout up, but something like that. Missile kind of has a little bit of a lisp. The more and more oh, I eat skittles, um, we'll, we'll climb up to the we'll climb up to the torpedo room too. Up is definitely safer. Okay, I'll see you there then. I didn't realize the phones would work throughout the place. It's their internal phones, so yeah. yeah. Looks like the torpedoes can be launched manually with these switches. There are two tubes, so there should be one more left. I guess the first thing we have to do is load it into the tube. When it comes to missiles, you can count on me! I'll enter the coordinates of the command room into the torpedo. And I just turned on the backup power. We ought to be able to use the switches now. Okay, let's try it. Or good luck! Then, Trick time. Do we have to stop a missile from blowing up again? No, not necessarily. <laughs> this switch won't budge. Maybe it's broken? But I don't think the entire device is broken, though. It would probably work just fine if only I could move this switch. We'll just have to find a way to move it somehow. But I can't do it with my powers alone. 
What will happen to these two ladies? I think that's up to us. And our powers. What? This is no time to be standing around unsure of ourselves. Will you lend me your strength missile? Me? Of course I will! Count on it! Let's swap a telephone line for another telephone line! <laughs> oh, talk to, talk to Kimmel as missile. Please help my dad, sissy. It's missile! <laughs> I'll be okay here. I'm, I'm not scared. Uh, I'm not scared. <laughs> Leave it to me, Camilla. We'll be back with your father to save you. I promise. Wait a minute, Sissel! What is it? What you just said. I wanted to say that! Thank you, Missile. We can do it. I know we can! I love how they made Missile like a main character. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's, weird, we but already, great. I think we already talked to him, do we? How's it going there? I'm just calculating the command room's coordinates now. Okay. I have to put in a slight off test or offset, though. Don't want to blow it up. I'm sure Detective Jowd would appreciate that. Well, leave this to me. Good luck with the loading the missile. Okay, thanks. Wait. I think I need to move Sissel over one. I think you actually need to move him down, but... Okay, I'm gonna move Missile down one, and I'm gonna move Sissel down. And I'm gonna move Missile up. Swap him. Gotta move him back to where you were. No! I don't want to talk to people. I'm playing video games for a reason. There we go! The torpedo looks serviceable. <laughs> Meanwhile, Camilla's like, What's a torpedo? I'll set on this end, too. But something's odd. What is it? The command room. It looks like it's slowly sinking. Sinking? Yeah, like it's completely run out of power. I wonder what happened. I don't know, but I guess I'll find out. Right, okay, hop onto the missile. I'll launch it for you. Okay, thanks. Let's have missile. Hop onto the, the sissle. Wait, no, I didn't want to do that! Wait, we can't move missile? Nope. Oh. Let's go. I've already set the torpedo's course. It'll head toward the command room where Detective Jout is. Twelve seconds after launching, it'll pass by the command room for an instant. That instant will be your window of opportunity to jump over to the command room. Okay, got it. And then we'll find a way to come back and save you. That'll probably be my last task tonight. Just hold on until we get back. Somehow, they still have enough air. Oh. Okay, come on, Missile. Woof woof. What? Missile? I... I'm sorry. I... I can't go. What? I just can't. How could I leave? I can't leave Miss Lynn and Miss Camilla behind. I can't do it! Missile. I swapped the switches so the missile can be launched. You'll have to do the rest, Sissel. I can't do it, Iver. I can't ask Missile to come with me after that. I understand exactly how he feels. I want you to go, Missile. What? But, but Miss Lynn! You staying here won't change our fate. But if you go with Sissel, you might be able to make something happen, and that's our only hope. But what if that something doesn't happen? I'll never be able to see you again! Never, ever again! Even I can understand that. I... I couldn't stand it. Don't worry, Missile. Miss Camilla? I just know you and Sissy can make something happen. I believe in you. I'll be right here waiting for you. We'll see each other then. Don't worry. Miss Camilla! That's a good boy, Missile. Now, are you ready? Remember, it's 12 seconds after I throw the switch. We're ready. Sissel? Yes? We never found out who you really were. But that doesn't matter now. All I know is I'm truly glad I met you tonight. Thank you. For everything. And I'm glad I met you, Detective. 
But we're going to see each other again, right, Sissy? Right, Missile? That's right. We promise, little lady. Of course we will! I'll never forget you, no matter what happens. Here goes, then. You can get a terrible ending. <laughs> Just like, everybody dies, but they're happy. Good luck, friend. This is pretty epic. <laughs> Those 12 seconds are lasting an eternity. I strive to think of a way to save Lynn and the little lady the whole time. But how can a ray of light of hope reach this far down into the deep sea? Baby Ray will make it down to the deep of the sea. What can he do? <laughs> Maybe he'll take the phone line and then he'll be like, <laughs> I brought a phone with an extra long <laughs> extension cord. No, Lynn and know. Chloe, you're screwed. <laughs> but the ghosts can make it. No, I don't... May, maybe Ray of Light will just be like, Behold, I am the god of the dead, and I have the power to rescue people from the dead. <laughs> like, Behold. Behold. Be before I can think of an answer, the 12 seconds are up. That was more than 12 seconds. Yeah. Everything's falling to... Okay. Good thing we didn't have to do that. Uh... Detective Jowd! I bet that big masked man did this! I'm gonna bite him! You better not. You might break your teeth. The command room has lost power and is sinking. This is the most noble man here so ever. So I wonder what this masked man is going to do. Let's talk to Detective Jowd! Trick time. Somebody's dead, somebody's dead. Wait. Aww. Sorry for the wait, Detective Jowd. Wh who are you? Are you Sissel? Please excuse my appearance. I can't believe you made it here. How is Camilla? And what about Lynn? Well, it's kind of a long story. They're fine. I told Detective Jowd about everything that happened on the submarine, you know. So the submarine is badly damaged? Why would he do that to his own submarine? I wish I knew. I know the answer to that one. It's because he's afraid of my powers. Y Where'd you come from? You! You followed us?! I didn't even notice. It's been ten long years, Detective Jowd. Are you... Yamiul? Yamiul? Who knows? So you remember me, do you? How could I possibly forget? So that's your real name, huh? Yamiel? Nobody cares. That's right. But those people on the Yanoa were calling you Sissel. That's just an alias I was using for my deal with them. I didn't see any need to tell them my real name. Could you do me a favor? Would you let me ask you some questions? I've been trying to find out my true identity all night. Sure. Go ahead. Secretly, we're actually the park- uh, like, the park man! <laughs> <laughs> How?! <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty we can still tell you, right, Detective Jowd? Right. Ten years ago, you were a top systems engineer, weren't you? Systems engineer? What's that? By the way, I'm a top Pomerani or Pomeranian, you know? Well, it's kind of hard to explain to a dog, but it's a person who's good at using computer computers. I don't mean to brag, but I was one of the best in the industry. That's how I got roped into joining that project. Project? What project? It was a project aimed at reorganizing the nation's top-secret information. The goal was to build a new system using multi-dimensional programming theory. Huh. I was asked to join the project by an agent of the government. It doesn't sound like something a top Pomeranian would know something about. To me, it just sounded like another challenging job. Okay. However, this project was also the target of a secret plot. I bet you can imagine the kind of crime the nation's top secrets might attract. I never fought for the life of me I'd ever have to deal with spies. It was never made public, but every organization in the country moved on this one. Then one day, the name of a certain programmer emerged as a suspect. I was the guy who built the core of the system. The police arrested you, and then... that incident happened. He escaped from the interrogation room and took Little Lin as a hostage. By the way, Detective Jowd, 
when was it that I was proven innocent? About six months after your death. I'm so sorry, Yamil. Yeah, this... Uh, honestly, after all of this, I'm just like, Inspector Cabanilla kind of sucks. Like, <laughs> he did. He's a lot better now. Yeah, but still. Ten years ago? I kind of wondered if he would have been the one that sucked. <laughs> Ouch. I like him, though. Yeah, Cabanilla's a good character. I like, I like his character and how complex he is, but... My soul was split from my body, and I lost everything. Oh my gosh! Is this gonna be- okay. I was sealed in eternal darkness. Eternal darkness. I existed in this world, no question about that. But nobody noticed my presence. Oh! Okay. You could, like, walk around as a shadow. What good were my powers? They didn't help anybody. Not even the passage of time could heal my pain. Yeah, that sucks. In fact, it only made it worse. Protect the park! The rock of the gods! Yeah. I wanted to disappear, but I wasn't even allowed to do that. The way Lynn described it is exactly right. Sinking slowly towards the bottom of an endless sea. An overwhelming feeling of loneliness and despair. And I wanted all of you to suffer what I was suffering. And that's why you murdered Alma. That's right. I wanted you to know what it was like to lose everything you cared about. I wanted you to feel the same pain I felt. What?! It was the twisted wish of a mind poisoned by infinite loneliness. And then... As I was plotting my revenge, I had an idea. I came up with a plan to use these powers of mine to make a deal. Yeah. There's something I just don't understand about that deal. I'm sure your powers would be very valuable to them. But, what would you get out of the deal? A new life. Life? I asked them for two conditions. Number one was that they helped me with my revenge plot. And the second was a rebirth for me. Rebirth? A new beginning, eh? I didn't care if it was a fake life, an artificial life. I just wanted a physical receptacle for my soul, a name, an identity, an everyday life. I wanted to grow old and in a society that would accept me. And finally, I wanted to die surrounded by a loving family. That's the kind of life I asked from them for. A completely man-made life. A uh, clone. That's right. I knew I couldn't hope for anything more than that. To make it all come true, I knew it would take a lot of money and a lot of power. That's why I decided to ask a national government to help me. And their response in the end... was betrayal. I mean, yeah. Okay. They were making their moves much more carefully than I suspected. They sent spies to this country and researched my powers on their own. And... They even figured out what Temzik was all about. And you had no idea they were doing all this? Not at all. I was a fool. So then, why did they go to all the trouble of making a deal with you? Why didn't they just steal a hunk of the Temzik meteorite from the park? They couldn't. Huh? After the manipulator incidents, research was conducted in this country, too. A report was submitted to the government about the source of the manipulator's power. By Inspector Cabanella and the old pigeon guy, eh? At first, the government didn't believe the report. But then they decided to put the park under surveillance just in case. Surveillance, huh? It just looks like an ordinary peaceful park, but there are armed agents there at all times. Don't tell me that odd leaflet guy is one of them! No, not him. He's just a plain old odd person. <laughs> Good. That park is like a silent battlefield on an international scale. So that's why they couldn't just steal the Temzig meteorite. And lately, under the pretense of building a housing site, they've been working on a plan to destroy the park in order to secure the Temzig meteorite. So that's it, eh? Leafwood guy can have his, jo his wife back. <laughs> Still, though. So the upshot of your grand deal was this, eh? Yeah, 
It's the ending I deserve. But at least there's one thing you must be happy about. What's that? You've managed to seal me away at the bottom of the sea forever. Well, shall we get started? Started with what? Bringing Detective Jowd back to life, of course. What? What good will that do now? But we promised! We promised Miss Lynn and Miss Camilla that we'd save them! And we can't do that without you, Detective Jowd. I've been guided by fate tonight to this place. I won't give up now. Alright, fine. Let's see where it leads us. Here we go then. Back to four minutes before your death. This is a long chapter. It's actually not that long. It's just a lot of dialogue, basically. Yeah. Four minutes before death, south of the Unoa control room, 4.23 a.m. So, where are we headed? We are not headed anywhere, Detective. What? We were all, there was only enough fuel on board to launch us away, Detective. We will run out soon and that will be our destination, Detective. What are you talking about? That would mean that you're trapped here too! By the way, I am not human, Detective. Oh. I'm a remote control robot, Detective. What? Your country's use of technology is just plain off! We get that a lot, Detective. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you go to all the trouble to do this? That's nothing but a shell there. It's hardly a friend to anymore. Commander Sif likes to provide against any possibility, no matter how small, Detective. Possibility? What are you talking about? There's no need for you to know, Detective. Now it's time to say goodbye, Detective. In the end, your fate remains the same, it seems, Detective. Ah, <sighs> Camilla. Forgive me. See, when I first played this, I was sure that this guy, the masked muscle man, was going to betray Commander Sith. Like, and like that would have been he'd that be would have been so cool. It isn't. I over. didn't think he was a robot. Neither I just did thought I. he was the most loyal, like stoic, like, guy. stoic guy. Just like I'll die for you, sir. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it isn't over yet. It isn't. Remember what that big masked man said? Any possibility, no matter how small. Possibility? In other words, there must be a chance here somewhere. The possibility of turning this situation around. Just break down the robot. We've got three guys now to work Would with. you believe me if I told you this is the easiest death to prevent in the game? Probably. Trick time. Huh? What is it, detective? Look at Yamiel's shell. There's no aura emanating from his body. Of course there isn't. The Temsic fragment is gone. Could this change in his shell give us some kind of lead? I figured it out. I know what this possibility, no matter how small, is that they are so afraid of. What is it? My time was perpetually stopped thanks to the power of Temsic. His body cycled between the moments that separated his life and death. Right, but not anymore. The Temsic Fragment has been taken away. Exactly. So what does that mean? I get it. Your body won't come back to life anymore. The moment the Temsic Fragment was removed, my shell became a regular corpse. So, let's see. That means we can go back? Back to four minutes before your death? But wait a minute! Exactly when is that death? That's simple. We'll find out. When we get there, let's move! Oh my gosh, it's gonna be like back ten years ago. <gasps> or 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 alternately it could be back before right before he it got removed from his body. Yeah, it could be. We can kill Sif before that happens. Also the name his name Commander Sif is pretty cool. Yeah, he reminds me of like the Sif Lord. I fell back through the cracks of time for what seemed like forever. And then I saw it. The final death at the end of this long night. Who exactly am I? I've already seen all the clues. All I have to do now is remember. The final journey to the truth starts now. You're gonna be like, psych! There's a chapter 18! 
not chapter 18, but there is, quote-unquote, the final chapter that's not numbered. Really? That's stupid. I, I wanted to finish it tonight. We can finish it tonight. That wasn't a super long episode, I don't think. Was it? How long was it? Oh, it was 40 minutes. Eh, that was, I guess okay. that's kind of long. Thanks for watching, everybody! Tune in next time! It is the final episode, the final chapter. Everything's getting solved. All questions get answered. Great. It's probably one of the best finishes to any game, Probably! Honestly. It's, it's so, really good. Thus far, it's been going pretty well, I feel like. Yeah, so definitely tune in next time. And until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.